In this video, I'll demonstrate several things about composition of functions. First of all, we'll work with numbers directly instead of working with equations. And second of all, um, uh, you'll notice that we can have g of x and h of x, just like f of x and g of x. And it doesn't matter which is which. Um, we can do a composition of g of h of x, um, or we can do a composition of h of g of x. Either, either one is legit. In fact, we're going to try to do both. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, determine what, uh, what the set is made up of for g of h of x and for h of g of x. We can see the, 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 the sets, um, the, the set of uh, coordinate pairs for g and the set of coordinate pairs for h. We're going to determine the set of coordinate pairs for g of h and the set of coordinate pairs for h of g. This will just give us another way of looking at composition of functions. It's not, di it's not really different from the other stuff we've looked at. Um, this will give us just another perspective. So let's begin the walkthrough of how to find one of these guys. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, g of h, um, and uh, we're going. And so what we'll do is we'll take this first x value five, and we'll put it into h, and then whatever h of five is, we'll put that into g. So for example, um, h of five. Um, if g, if if I if x is five, in h my y is going to be 7. So h of 5 must be 7. So notice that I say g of h of 5 is the same as g of 7. Um, then I'm putting 7 into as x into g. So g of 7 must be 8 or the y value that's associated with the 7. So that gets me 8 as my output. So g of h of 5 gets me 8. That's the beginning of my g of h of x composition, or, or, or that'll give me my sets. Um, and in fact, I can actually write this as an ordered pair. Um, if I put in a 5, I get out an 8 when we're talking about um, g of h of x. So let's continue. Um, how about this? Let's try g of h. And we'll just go to each of these inputs, 3 and 7 and 9. So h of 3. So if I put a 3 into h, I get a 5 out. So if I put a 3 into h, I'll get g of 5. And if I put a 5 into g, then I will get a 3 out. So 5 into g gets me 3. So that gets me an ordered pair. I put in a 3. I got out a 3. So I put x is 3. And then my g of h of x will be also 3. So now I'm establishing my ordered pairs for my g of h of x. Um, let's try another. So g of h of, now I'll put a 7 in. And when I do, if I put 7 into h, I get a 9 out. So here's h of 7, so that'll be g of 9. If I put a 9 into g, I get an 8 out, so that gets me 8 again. So now I have an ordered pair. If I put a 7 in to h, I get uh, an 8 out of g of h of x. So 7 goes in, 8 comes out. And I believe we have one more. Um, let's go g of h. Uh, we'll put in a 9, and when I do, I then get an 11 out. So g of 11, and if I put an 11 into g, I get a 4 out. So there's my 4. So I put a 9 in as x, and my g of h of x is 4. So I put a 9 in, I get a 4 out. And what this means is, is in the end, I can wrap this up by saying this that g of h of x, um, uh, or, or as we, uh, well, as, as I wrote up there, I guess I could just write um, g of h will be equal to this set, 5, 8, 
that's one ordered pair, and three comma three, and seven comma eight, and nine comma four. So that is my set of ordered pairs that is g of h. Now we'll do the same thing for h of g. And what I'm hoping is is that maybe I can, maybe you can pause it and then you'll try to work ahead of me and then check to see if you're right. Okay, so let's do this with h of g. And this time we'll put in whatever we can put into g. We can put a 7 into g. And when I put a 7 into g, I get an 8 out. So we'll do h of 8. And when I do h of 8, I've got to look and see, um, is it possible to put an 8 into h? And the answer is no. So what we say here is, is that h of g of 7 is undefined. And we're okay with that. That's fine. No, no big deal. It's just undefined. And we'll just abbreviate that as und in the future. Um, so let's take a look and see if we have any more of that going on. So h of g. We'll go ahead one by one. We'll look at the another input. I put in a 5 into h of g. Um, g of 5 gets me 3. So h of 3. And again, if you want to pause this, this at any time and work ahead, please feel free. Um, h of 3, so I put a 3 in, I get a 5 out. So yay, I actually get a value here. So if I put a 5 into g, I actually get a 5 out of h of g of x. So I have an ordered pair, I put in a 5, I get a 5 out. Yay. Let's try another one. How about h of g, and I'll do this until I've gotten all the inputs of g. I put a 9 into g, and I get an 8 out, so that'll be h of 8. And then I try to put an 8 into h, I cannot, so this must be undefined. Sad, but true. And then finally, we'll do one more, and let's go ahead and say h of g of 11. So we'll put 11 into g, and when we do, we get a 4 out, so that'll be h of 4. And again, sadly, I just get an undefined result. So it turns out that when I go to write um, what h of g is, the set of all ordered pairs that is h of g, uh, it's simply 5 comma 5, and that's okay. That happens. That's the only ordered pair that is in my um, set, and that's fine. Okay, so that, this gives us another perspective on what composition of functions is all about.